bad guy. I missed him. <laughs> Got him. Let's get him again. <laughs> he ran out of ammo. All right, Hickok 45. What a contraption. Look at that thing. I had a little bit of lead on him. Yeah. Uh, what happened to my extra shells? They fell out. I'll be darned. Where did they go? <laughs> we'll find them. We'll find them. Anyway, what we have here is a different sort of firearm. You've seen firearms like this lately. I think everybody's making one. And so uh, why not? Emperor Arms decided to as well, I guess. So thought we'd... Uh, okay. So anyway... Let's shoot this thing, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to shoot just a couple of more with the, I'll shoot some of these, I don't know. Uh, the diversity, a variety of, of, of shells, and let me uh, pull the trigger. Does that make the difference? No. Let me, I guess sometimes they don't want to load when they're not cocked, right? There we go. I'm sure I'll put a couple in. Okay, now I'm going to show you a couple of things about it. Uh, we'll point out the negatives and we'll point out the positives. How's that? That sounds like a plan because that's what we do, don't we? So I'm going to shoot. Let's go ahead and shoot some of this water here. Let's shoot this Listerine bottle. Give it some bad breath. How's that? See if I can hit it. <laughs> Got them both. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, and what? You know what? We don't want to go too far along here before we smoke a little pot. <laughs> Okay, so now you notice one of the differences uh, <laughs> this thing is, it, does this look like something I would carry? Uh, maybe not in this configuration. Uh, we've got a red dot side on it. We have a big rail. We've got a bayonet. Oh, no, wait a minute. That's an icebreaker. And, uh, you know, a side saddle kind of thing, uh, ammo carrier, uh, which we shook the rounds out of down there. But... Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, bring it down a little bit. Okay. Make it a little more, uh, I don't know, manageable for me. Uh, the, the rail is pretty cool. If you, if that's what you, if that's your thing, you know, it's an aluminum rail and you know, you could hang a toaster here, here, you know, on either side or anywhere on the top. You could put flip up sights, you know, all the advantages you get with a rail. Okay. And that might be your perfect rig right there. Plus, it's a good-looking gun. It, I think it's Turkish walnut. These are made, I think the parts maybe are made in Turkey, and it's, uh, I don't know how it exactly works, and they come out of Florida. So I think there's import uh, issues, you know, with, with these things, these firearms. They're not a shotgun, remember. They're a firearm, okay, because of the configuration. Uh, according to the ATF, it's just called a firearm, classified as a firearm. In fact, these are not shotgun shells you're looking at. These are... Firearm, what is it? Uh, it's just uh, firearms ammo, okay? <laughs> so so they come out of Florida, and, uh, you yeah, know, kind of new. I don't think they've been out long. So what I'm going to do, and, and in the process, I'll show you how it, how it uh, kind of comes apart, if you want to, and, and how I would probably uh, carry it. If I had one of these I needed to, to have handy, I would take the, the red dot off, okay? I would take that off. And I would take the rail off for, for me, probably. I, I can't imagine. You know, I don't know. Maybe. You never know. For one thing, uh, again, I'll point at the negatives. My hand kind of hits the side saddle or the carrier. Side saddle is a brand. They, they make these for a lot of shotguns, so I shouldn't call it a side saddle. Side saddle is probably a lot higher quality because I have used those before. But it's an ammo carrier, and it's in the way okay, of my hand. Also, the first time I shot it, and it didn't get me today, but I caught my, you know, from recoil, I caught uh, on the edge of that. I think maybe they're going to work on that. I, I don't know. But if I were going to take this into combat, I would take the side saddle off, and I'd put a piece of tape or something over that, and then uh, if I were going to leave the rail on it. Okay, so that's a couple of uh, little negatives there. So I'm going to take this thing off. Now, we're sure empty. Let's put the bolt back. Okay. Look at that chrome. It is uh, on the positive side. It seems to work. And it is chrome lined on the interior of the barrel as well as the exterior of the barrel, as I understand, before it's nickel. It's nickeled. Okay. So it's also got nickel plating or whatever. So I guess even on the receiver. So 
Uh, should be durable if you're around the beach, I suppose. Let's take this off. There's just three screws, and we need the other one here. All right, so these screws on the back of it come out. They're kind of small, easy to lose. We don't want to lose them here. We got our Brazilian cowhides. We can hang on to them. I don't think it matters which ones you take off first. There's one in the front, so there's not a lot holding on on holding it on. And as with uh, you know uh, heat shields on shotguns or anything like this, uh, if you're going to have it on there, uh, that's one thing. When you do take it off, you're going to see a couple of little mars or scratches, you know, because they're they're against it somewhere. And I think because I've had it off once. I haven't shot it a lot. I've shot it several times because, you know, John and I are sort of experts in these little uh, firearms, not shotguns. No, we're not experts, but we have done several videos on them. I guess some of the earliest videos, uh, we just thought they were kind of interesting. So you see how the kind of, it's very light, weighs nothing. It's like it's made of aluminum or something. Yeah, it is made of aluminum. So there you go. Now, another option would be to, uh, if I were going to leave the rail on, like I said, you got little, little screws there. I would take uh, take the carrier off that gets in the way of my hand, and plus the shells don't seem to stay in it. Okay, so I take that off. Uh, I'm not a big. Uh, I I have had the uh, what did I just say the shell carrier the uh, I forgot the name now, but there there's probably two or three companies that make them for like any mainstream shotgun, and I have used those in the past. I've tried to use them when I was competing with a shotgun and like uh, USPSA shotgun competition, some things like that uh, back through the years. And I, they just, I just don't like them, okay? Uh, they're probably necessary in some cases, but. So anyway, there you go, look at that. Uh, that's more like my style right there, okay? So you got where it presses against that, you know, some issues, but. Uh, so again, it's the Duke, this one's the Duke. It's the silver model, like it's called. And, uh, they're, you know, they're out Turkey. They've been making shotguns a long time. The Turkey's famous for making some pretty good shotguns, uh, bargain shotguns, low-end shotguns, the whole nine yards. And, uh, you know, I think they, I don't know a lot about the company, but I understand there's like four or five or six generations of them. They've been making these things in Turkey, maybe under a different name. I don't know, but Emperor Arms, Emperor Firearms is who it is. And many of you, would probably know more about the company than I would, but everybody's gotten into this or getting into this this game uh, because, you know, they're legal. You don't have to go through special paperwork or anything, and you can have a shotgun barrel that is like 14 inches long, just a little over 14 inches, and have this Raptor style grip. And I think as long as the entire firearm is 26 inches, I believe is the length it has to be, and you, you can't take that off and put a regular stock on or anything like that. Uh, you know, like a full length, you can't do that. Then you end up with a short barrel shotgun, which does require paperwork for those of you who have not seen our shockwave videos. We've talked about that before. So when you take that off, you don't have a sight out here. So, man, there you go. You can't do 500 yard shooting. <laughs> so they're, you know, we know what they're for, don't we? Let's shoot the thing some more. Let's shoot the thing. Uh, uh, pretty wood, uh, and of course, that's a glass breaker, right? And that's, I don't know why the other companies haven't thought to put one of those on there, because, uh, you know, how else are you going to break through glass with this thing? You got a glass breaker on this one, right? So let's load him up again. I'm going to go ahead and top him off, put my ears on, safety's on, boom, put some more rounds. It holds four plus one. Okay, so I think some of the others on the market hold five, uh, so that could be a negative for you, could be a positive. It could be a positive negative, or a negative positive, couldn't it? Uh, and uh, so, so, I don't know, just trying to uh, see what's a negative and positive. A uh, positive on this firearm is uh, I like the looks of it. It's a good looking firearm uh, with the walnut and everything. I still, with these things, kind of like, so I think Talon grips, I may be wrong. I think they make a grip for these Raptor grips. So give them a plug, right? They help us. <laughs> but I think they do. Uh, if, 
you know, and, and absent that, you know, something around that would help immensely on any of these, I think. If you're going to shoot them a lot. Now, if it's just a, your truck gun or whatever you're going to do with it. And again, when I say truck gun, I'm talking wherever it's legal. All right. Uh, you know, so, you know, you're, you're not even going to shoot it much. Uh, it's kind of a, an emergency situation. It's like your fire extinguisher or something. Then, you know, maybe you don't worry about that. Especially now, there's nothing to hit your hand on or not. So, uh, I see. All right. Let's, let's shoot that target. How about that? So, I topped it off, right? Yeah. Boom. Shot high. There we go. <laughs> All right. What I do? Let me get the push it all the way forward. Yeah, we got a round hung up. Let me pull. I pulled the trigger on it, right? Yeah, we fired it. And so let me. So it's got a fired round. So let me put a little more pressure on it. Yeah. New gun. Hopefully that's all that is. So, there we go. Yep, it's firing. All right, let's try it again. <laughs> okay. That one got stiff in there. Let's uh, try it again. So, I mean, you know, it's, that's what it's for, you know, that kind of distance, okay? Wore out that target, didn't I? Let's put some more in safety on. And uh, see what we can do. I feel like there's something I forgot to tell you. But that's nothing new. Nothing new. Let me put some on that red plate there. Let's see. All right, here we go. <laughs> Yeehaw! A little high. <laughs> okay. Uh, you got to get the hang of where to hold. It's like a handgun if you've ever done that. I'll put some more in. I see this is the one that got stuck. Maybe it's got a different type of brass on it. And they're both just uh, field loads. Uh, you know, it's like shooting out here with a handgun. You, uh, you kind of get better at your instinct shooting. You get a, a really, <clears throat> I mean, if you do very much of it, you get a really good feel for where to hold. Uh, so whether it's a longer firearm or a short firearm or a handgun or whatever, there are some trick shooters like it was Ed McGivern could take a handgun, a Smith & Wesson, and just shoot stuff out of the air, throw stuff up in the air and pop it almost every time just from instinct, you know, shooting. And, uh, you know, like this is easy stuff compared with that, or should be. Let's try that uh, black one there. All right. I tend to go high, don't I? There we go. Oh, you're sticking again. Doesn't like that that ammo as much, does it? <laughs> All right. Ah, uh, these things are fun to shoot. As I've said before, let me try this again. It might just be the uh, federal premium of the uh, the competition clay target. I don't know. Was there a little slight difference or something? in the, the rifle or shotgun. Oops, excuse me, firearm. But uh, you kind of get the hang of it. And you know, for a defensive shotgun, defensive firearm, even that is pretty far away. Uh, when you start thinking about like inside your living room or something, somebody was trying to kill you. That would never happen, I hope. All right, let's uh, try that two liter on the stand there. Oh, how about that one? <laughs> Stop sign. <laughs> All right, kind of fun, kind of fun. So uh, it's interesting. Sometimes it was shotgun shells, you know, I, I mean, I don't know, you know more than I do. Everybody knows more than I know. The, uh, I know the reason that uh, like, like semi-automatic shotguns sometimes have trouble is they just are persnickety about some particular load or whatever. Uh, this seems to shoot the, the target ammo without any trouble. All right. We shot a lot of this stuff. 
fun. All right. I see some two liters. I bet you I can hit them even from over here. Because I've got bird shot. <laughs> pretty, pretty. Yee, doggies. Let's shoot that lid. <laughs> uh, oh, an old pizza pan. <laughs> I destroyed it. I see another pot of smoke right here. Now look at the smoke that makes. <laughs> oh, cool. You know what? I guess I, I know what you want me to do. You saw those slugs there, didn't you? I told John I didn't think I was going to shoot slugs and punish myself. But guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to shoot them anyway. Oh, man. It hurts to look at them. Hurts to look at them. So I got five. I'll just put them all in there. The safety on. Okay, and you know, as a defensive firearm, uh, generally with high brass, uh, you have fewer issues. A shotgun, uh, probably more consistency, uh, and that's if, as a defensive firearm, that's what you'd have in it. Some maybe number four buck or whatever you like, your double lot buck, and that sort of thing, uh, more so than birdshot. Okay, you're not worried about recoil. Uh, generally speaking, if you actually have to fire, all right, we might as well take the watermelon out. I wonder if I could get lucky and hit that two liter also. Well, I'm not going to try to aim, but okay, Mr. Watermelon, see if I can hit you. Now, I'm shooting bullets now, a slug. It's going to be embarrassing if I miss. It's going to kick either way. <laughs> well, I knocked off the two liter. That wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad. See, there's an example. That's a powerful round, and you would think it would expand plenty, but, you know, there's no issue. All right, what else can we shoot with a slug? Well, let's just go over there and shoot in amongst them. I'll carefully try to put one in there amongst the, uh, uh, the buffalo and the ram. I'm not going to aim. I can't really aim, but well, what the heck. <laughs> I quit. I'm going home. <laughs> I shouldn't have said in amongst them, I'm going to hit the buffalo. That's what I meant. I'm going to hit the buffalo. Okay, I'm going to hit the ram. Oh, man, I saw that. It was close. Oh, that wasn't too far away either. <laughs> so, as John and I found out from early on, you know, with the, the Mossberg versions of these, that you can act, I think John was putting it up and hitting whatever he wanted over there. Uh, with the bead side or whatever, and uh, I'm gonna do that again. I'm kind of I'm glad I brought those slugs out here. I don't. It doesn't just kill you or anything in the recoil. I gotta do that again, mainly because I gotta get one on the gong, right? <laughs> so as with 22 stuff, 22 long rifle uh, shotguns, especially sometimes you get uh, you gotta. You gotta just test and see what ammo might be. It might be what ammo your firearm is sensitive to or, or whatever, I guess. All right. Okay. Let's see if we can hit the gong. Now, I've got to be careful. Uh, I want to err on the low side. If I err, which I will. Now, I'm just instinct shooting. I'm not really, I'm not sighting. I'm just kind of pointing it out there. Pretty close. <laughs> it's it hard. I'm gonna try that ram again. Oh man, my new rifle. I'm gonna put one in the cowboy. What the heck? <laughs> okay, what else? Uh, I don't want to miss on my last shot. Uh, well, it's okay if I do. You'll forgive me, won't you? I'm gonna throw another one at the gong. Since I hit it already, I won't. I won't cry if I miss. Okay, let's try him again. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 neat. Okay. So anyway, yeah, good thing you got a glass breaker on that. That way you could get through a glass window somehow if you had to. So anyway, the Emperor Arms uh, uh, Duke in a silver model they make this thing and uh, i think there's two or three different pump versions of this same firearm 
uh, I think one with a rail, one without the rail, and they're blue or, or you know, or, or black finish of some kind, and that sort of thing. Now this one, uh, I guess because of maybe all the chrome lining and exterior and, and the nickel uh, finish, it's $4.99, I think, something like that. Uh, so not, not, they don't give them away, of course. And the rail, of course, adds, adds to that, right? So, uh, so you do have that. Uh, sorry, the Duke 12 gauge. Uh, and then, of course, you got your rail, which you already saw. I won't stick it back on there. And uh, so, positives again, great looking gun, seems to shoot, shoot fine. You know, you're going to find ammo that maybe a uh, particular gun doesn't like. Uh, uh, the other stuff is just fine. The, the high brass did beautifully. Um, and um, what else? Uh, the, of course, the glass breaker is the, the biggest positive. Uh, good looking gun, same solid. And uh, yeah, kind of, a, I get a Remington uh, 870 uh, vibe, you know, from it, the way it operates and the, the feel of it and everything. I think it's closer to that than, than a Mossberg type feel and operation and safety and everything. Uh, and again, it feels very, very, very solid. Uh, so, uh, you know, those would be the, the positives. Negatives, maybe it's a little pricey for you. You don't want a rail, don't need a rail. And uh, like I say, the, the shell carrier just doesn't work so well. And uh, so, I don't know. anyway, that, that's it. Thought we'd give you a look at it. Uh, we've shot several of these sorts of firearms. <clears throat> you notice I've been pretty good about not saying shotgun you know and uh, it's not a crime if you do say that by the way but uh, you know it is classified as a firearm and uh, so there uh, just we haven't done anything like this for a while you know again I, I'm not a tactical trainer I'm not Clint Smith I'm so much more handsome than Clint Smith I saw Clint I, I, I've met Clint Smith that was a joke Clint you know like I would have to tell you no uh, I'm not a trainer or anything, so John and I don't get too much into all that stuff, you know. Obviously, a, a shoulder-mounted firearm is easier to shoot well. You know, that's, that goes without saying, for a novice especially, or almost anybody. Uh, but then again, I think people have come down a little too hard on these. Because I think John and I, in the videos we've done with these, have demonstrated that uh, you can shoot them, okay? They, they shoot you know pretty well you got any instincts at all about shooting you're not recoil sensitive and then some of them come in i don't know about this one i should know that shouldn't i i know some of them come in 410 20 gauge and everything so so there's something that anybody could handle so they're not just totally useless is what i'm trying to say that like a lot of people you know try to claim they are uh if i had to go to battle tomorrow with a a firearm that fires these things let's put it that way uh, I would, you know, I'd rather take my 870 or my Mossberg 590 or something, or my Benelli uh, M4, <laughs> no doubt about it. But, you yeah, there might be a place for, you know, something like this for a lot of us. And a lot of people think that. I see these gun shops everywhere now and uh, think they're selling a lot of, a lot of this type of firearms I'm getting at. So anyway, I'll shut up. That's uh, the good and the bad. And uh, I'll put it back together. And uh, I'm... I may just get me a holster, shoulder holster rig for it, and uh, and and get me one, buy me one. Uh, this one goes back to Buzz, and uh, just be carrying it around. So if you see me with one of these in a shoulder rig, you'll know what that's about. So I'm glad y'all came out, and I know I rambled too much, but it's it's good to see you. John's back from Hawaii, and it's good to be doing videos again, and uh, taking some shots on camera for you all, because we love you all. So we appreciate you all supporting us and supporting the people that support us. So hope you have a great week, and I'm going to let you go and shut up. Life is good. Hey, go along. Oh, hey, just throwing a little frisbee here on the range. While you're here, I want to remind you to check us out in some other places on the Internet and our friends over at Talon Grips. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter under Hickok45 and on Instagram under the real Hickok45 and John underscore Hickok45. Also go to BunkerBranding.com for our t-shirts, hats, patches, and stickers. So we appreciate, of course, the support from Talon Grips. Go to TalonGunGrips.com. They make all sorts of different textured grips for handguns and rifles. Uh, Dad's been using them for a lot of years. They do great work. 
and we're happy to have them on board. So please check them out, talongungrips.com. And then also, don't forget, we have videos on GunStreamer now. So if you're watching them over there, you probably already know about it. But if you're not, you might not. So maybe check that out, gunstreamer.com. And uh, hey, there's some more videos being recommended to you that you should probably be watching right now. So I'll let you go. Thanks.